glad that you're in the building with us today. We're glad you're joining us online. Thanks so much for being here. We're starting a new series called Happily Ever After. I want to tell you about a situation, personal situation. Maybe, guys, you'll get this. Ladies, I don't know, but let me just tell you anyway. Um, so lawnmowers and the running of your lawnmower is important. Guys, can I get an amen there? Uh, that means something in our lives. And uh, so my mother and father-in-law gave us a, actually a great present. They gave us their old lawnmower. Now, when I say that, you say, well, hey, that doesn't sound that great. But it was this really great lawnmower they gave us. We have property now, and I have to cut a lot of grass. And they gave us their old lawnmower that was really nice. And I was so excited to get it. And um, so we, I bring it to my property, and I fire it up. The thing runs great, cuts all the grass. And I cut it off, turned it in, and went in the house. And I was like, hey, this lawnmower is great. Well, that was the best it had ever been because every other time it won't crank. And uh, guys, if you, if you know what I'm talking about, that's so frustrating. You see, something is weak in the battery system. Something is weak in the charging system. And, and that lawnmower just won't crank consistently. I'm going to tell you the end of that story in just a moment. But, but maybe you feel like that lawnmower sometimes. <laughs> maybe you feel weak. Uh, maybe you even come in here today and there's a weakness in your life um, and it's just frustrating. Uh, maybe it's a weakness of willpower. I mean, as much as you try, you just can't quite um, stop what's going on. Or maybe it's a weakness in your confidence. Uh, you just had a few dings in life and um, so now you just don't feel as confident as maybe you did at once. Uh, maybe you're just a little bit broken. Maybe something happened in your life and you're broken and you feel a little weak from that. Um, and when we're weak, we feel exhausted and spent and broken and crushed, insufficient, and it's just frustrating. And so my guess today is some of us are, are weak in some area of our life. Uh, we come in today and we want to worship and we want to honor our God, and yet in the back of our minds there's a weakness going on. Something is just not where it needs to be. And I want to go directly at our weaknesses today. And in this series, um, we're going to talk about how to be happy even in circumstances that don't seem too happy. Now, we don't like weakness. Uh, we, as a matter of fact, I might use a stronger word than that. We hate to feel weak. As a matter of fact, in the American culture, weakness is not, a, it's not an approved thought or feeling. Uh, as Americans or as people, we want to feel strong. We want to feel vibrant, and we don't really want to tell people that we're weak. We, we don't want to show people that we're weak, and so because of that, it, it's, there's even more turmoil that goes in our lives. When we feel weak, uh, the culture looks down on us. <laughs> Again, the culture values strength, um, and when we're weak, we have a tendency to want to wrestle back power. How, how can I power up to get to where I need to be? And as we know, when we try to power up in our own strength, that doesn't work, right? I mean, we're already weak. We already said we're weak. Well, powering up's not going to do any good. It's not going to change anything. And so we fight this feeling and we fight this dynamic in our lives, and it's just frustrating. And it fails every time we try to power up, right? Every time I try to just say, oh, I can do this, I'm, I'm weak, but I can do this, I can be strong, we, we fail, and when we fail, we feel even worse about ourselves. And then we look at other people and we say, you know what, they were weak and they navigated it well. They did good. Uh, they, they had a weakness or they had a loss or they had a challenge and, and they just kind of went through it perfectly. And here I am, I can't quite do what they're doing. And then we tell ourselves lies. We say things like, I'll never be happy again. I'll never overcome this. I'm the only one going through this weakness. You ever done that? You tell yourself those lies. Here you're already weak and you're not powered up. You just can't quite find the strength. And, and then you tell yourself these lies. It's only me. Nobody else is going through this. You know, it's normal to go through seasons of weakness. It's normal to have areas of our life that feel weak. And so today, I just want us to be honest about that. I just kind of want us to be real honest about our weaknesses because if we're ever going to become strong, we first of all need to understand where we're weak. So let me ask you a question. What area of your life do you feel weak? What area of your life is there just a weakness? Is there an insufficientness that you want to find some strength? 
What area do you just feel like you're not 100% at the moment? If you have your outline, I want to take you to a passage. And these are words from our Savior, which, um, man, what, what a teacher he was and is. And he, in this passage today, in Matthew 5, he talks about what we're talking about in this series. He talks about happiness. And uh, in Matthew 5 here, he's uh, doing the Sermon on the Mount. And, and this is one of the greatest sermon, the greatest sermon probably ever preached by any person. And uh, in this sermon, he says something that is just going to blow your circuits, if you think about it. As a matter of fact, look what he says here. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn, God will comfort them. Isn't that just amazing that Jesus would say that to you and I? As a matter of fact, I want, to tie, I want you to tie a couple things together. I'd love for you to tie happy there in that first part to poor. Go ahead and draw a line there or somehow connect those two because he said happy are those who know they're spiritually poor. And then the next beatitude says this, happy are those who mourn. Happy are those who mourn. Would you connect happy and mourning? You see, in our world, we never connect those things, right? It wouldn't make any sense to connect those things. But both of those things speak to weakness. Uh, when we talk about being poor or we talk about mourning, we, we consistently think about those are, as being weak in some way. And yet Jesus here says we can be happy. That in the middle of those weaknesses, we can find happiness. So I want to jump in today, and I want us, as we think about our lives and the areas where maybe we feel weakest, I want us to find out how can we find some happiness. You see, this series is called Happily Ever After, and, and you know, it's a pursuit of all people, right, to be happy? I mean, all of us want to be happy to some level, and, and we search for happiness, but let me remind you of something. I'd love for you to write this down. Happiness comes from a who, not a what. Happiness comes from a who, not a what. As Christians, we know the who. As Christians, we know that Jesus is the who. And you see, there is no what when it comes to happiness. There's only a who. And that's what Jesus was trying to convince the listeners here of this message today. He was trying to convince them that you can be happy even when you feel weak. That even when you feel your weakest, you can find strength and you can find happiness. So again, let me ask you a question. I might ask this a few more times. Where do you feel weak? What areas of your life do you feel some weakness? If you have your Bible, I'd love for you to go to 2 Corinthians here on your outline. And we're going to talk about a guy who felt weak. He goes directly at the topic that we're talking about today. Weakness. And he addresses weakness in a way that probably no person has ever addressed it before him. Uh, you see, he talks about weakness, and, and he spends a, a couple verses and, and, and a nice chunk of Scripture telling us how to handle weakness. You say, well, why would he do that? Because he knew we'd all find our weaknesses, that we'd be weak, that we'd feel weak, and that every human at some point was going to have to try to fi figure out how to manage their weaknesses. And that's what Paul does here in 2 Corinthians 12. Let me use some background here because what was happening is in the church of Corinth, which Paul, he, he created this church. He planted this church. It was his baby that he began. And what happened in this church, there were people that were called boasters. Boasters. They wanted to talk about their greatness and about how they had heard from God and, and how they had kind of a corner on God. And uh, what they were really trying to do is make others feel bad about their relationship with God. And so they would boast about their relationship with God and what God had showed them. And so everybody else sitting around just didn't feel like they measured up. And Paul realized this was a problem, that it would split the church. And so Paul jumps right into the middle of this situation and he kind of parachutes into this situation and he writes to people about strength and weakness. And what he's going to say to these people and what he's going to say to us is crucial if we're ever going to find happiness. You see, Paul explains his own life. And he talks about an ailment that was given to him. In a moment, we're going to see him call it a thorn in the flesh. 
And as he talks about this, he really gives a testimony about his own life. And he says, you know what? I have this weakness. And it's a weakness that I've lived with, we're going to learn in a moment, for 14 years. And for 14 years, I've struggled with this weakness, and I've really learned how to manage it. I've really learned how to live life with this weakness with me. I can't get rid of it. I've prayed to get rid of it. I've asked God to get rid of it, and I can't get rid of this weakness. I'm just going to have to live with it. And so what Paul does is when these other guys are talking about how strong they are and, and how much they know and, and how much they can boast about, Paul, a guy who had really done a lot of great things, said, you know what? I'm weak. I'm weak. And he says to people and he says to God what sometimes we need to say. I feel weak. I just don't feel the strength that I need to make it through what I'm going through. And so let me ask you to write down one more thing if you don't mind. When you're weakened by life, you can be strengthened by God. When you're weakened by life, you can be strengthened by God. So you three things today that we're going to learn as Paul talks about his weakness. And, and not only does he talk about his own personal weakness, but he gives us a, a window in to how we handle our own weaknesses. Number one on your outline, our greatest weaknesses can become our greatest strengths. Our greatest weaknesses can become our greatest strengths. I want to read these verses to you and just show you how Paul goes directly at how to handle our weaknesses in verses 5 through 7. Here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 5 through 7. It says this, That experience is worth boasting about. I'll come back to that in a minute. But I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so, because I would be telling the truth. But I want to do it, because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Even though I've received such a wonderful revelation from God. Here's what Paul says, and I want to start with the end. He says, I've received such a wonderful revelation from God. Let me tell you what happened in Paul's life. This is 14 years before what we're reading right now. 14 years before what we're reading right now, Paul was given a vision by God. And he talks about in the previous verses how that vision from God was so powerful. And it was so meaningful for his life. And he talks about meeting with God and kind of having a a communication with God. And yet, when these guys begin to boast, he says, you know what? I'm not going to boast about that. I mean, I've been in the presence of God. I've actually spoken to God, but I don't want to boast about that. I don't want to highlight my own life in that way. He said, I've received this great revelation, but I'm not going to boast about that. Look what he says next in verse 5 at the top there. It says, that experience is worth boasting about. He said, I've done something that I could boast about every day of my life. I've met with God. And he said, but I'm not going to do it. And then look what he says in verse 5. Don't miss this, please. He says, I will boast only about my weaknesses. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I mean, here's a guy that had met with God and had a strong relationship with God and, and probably could boast about just so many things that he had experienced. And he says, you know what? I'm only going to boast about my weaknesses. You see, his, he realized that his weaknesses could become his strengths. Did you know that our job is to point to God so much that we really can't point to ourselves in any way? Our job is to point to him with so much effort and so much energy that we have nothing left to point to ourselves. And you see, that's what Paul did. He said, I had this ailment and this ailment was tough. It made me weak. It made me feel like I was in some ways useless. And he said, but I'm going to boast about my weaknesses. I heard a story of a guy who was shipwrecked. And uh, he was on a ship. The, the ship lost power. He wrecked. And he's on this island by himself. And there on that island by himself, he's trying to figure out, how in the world am I going to get out of here? Every morning he would wake up and scan the horizon to see if there were any ships. No ships. Every night before he went to bed, he'd scan the horizon looking for ships. No ships. 
So for months, this guy was on this deserted island all by himself, shipwrecked and alone. One night he went to bed and he woke up to something that was unusual and he looked out on the shore and there that boat had gone up in fire. He's in flames. And I mean, this guy was frustrated. God, I'm shipwrecked. My boat's on fire. I have no hope. All of my stuff was on that boat. That was kind of Operation Central for him. And everything that he had was gone. He decided, you know what, I'm going to go back to bed and maybe I'll just die. He woke up the next morning and again he heard something odd and he looked down at that shore and guess what he saw? Another boat. And some people coming off of that boat and he ran up to them and he said, guys, how did you know I was here? They said, we saw your smoke signals. (laughs) You see, sometimes we have to be weak in order to be strong. Sometimes we have to lose some things in order to gain some other things. And maybe you've lost some stuff. Maybe today you feel like you've lost something. You feel weak. Well, it's normal. But did you know that sometimes when we lose some things, we gain other greater things? And here's Paul. He said, I boast about my weaknesses. I boast about those areas of my life where I feel the weakest. Those are what the things I boast about. So let me take you to number two. Our greatest loss can become our greatest gain. Our greatest loss can become our greatest gain. Let me take you to verses 7 and 8 here under point number 2. Let's notice what we find. It says, so to keep me from becoming proud. Let's stop there for just a moment. Here's Paul and he's saying, you know what? If I wasn't careful, I could be proud. Uh, Paul was a rich man in his In his early years, he was a very wealthy man, a very well-known man. Later on, in that era, he was a Jesus hater. Later on, he became a Jesus lover, lost most everything. But I told you earlier, he met with Jesus. There was some kind of vision that he had with Jesus. And he says, so to keep me from becoming proud, meaning that he could very easily talk about his strengths. But in order that he didn't do that, look what we find. I was given a thorn in my flesh. We could spend all day talking about thorns in our flesh, couldn't we? Probably many of you in here today have a thorn of some way in your flesh. Something that has made you feel weak. Maybe for you it's a health issue. Uh, Maybe for you it's a mind thing. And you just can't think well at times. Maybe for you it's a loss of a loved one. I mean, I could go on and on about the thorns in the flesh because because we're alive, guess what? We have thorns in the flesh. You see, only dead people don't have thorns in the flesh. Alive people have thorns in their flesh. And you and I both have those. Look what he says next. A messenger from Satan to torment me. Now, isn't that crazy to think about? Paul says, here I am, and I'm serving Jesus, I'm I'm doing what he wants me to do, and for some reason, I'm given this thorn in my flesh, and I feel like it's from Satan. I feel like it's from the enemy to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. He said, good grief, what am I going to do with this? You see, let me talk about that word given for just a moment, because you would think that this is some kind of negative word here, given. But that word in the Greek, it means, believe it or not, a Christmas present or a birthday present. That's the given. Paul actually was able to think well in such a way that the thorn in the flesh was a gift, a present. You see, he had such a perspective on life where he realized that his weaknesses actually were strengths. That his thorn in the flesh was actually a gift. I want to talk about the thorn for a moment. I want to tell you a few things about the thorn that he had here. It was an ongoing thorn. We don't know exactly what it is. There are a lot of guesses. But but I think we're left in the dark in some ways because I think God wants us all to think through our thorns. 
Because Paul's thorn and your thorn may be totally different. We all have thorns, right? But whatever his thorn was, it was painful. It was humiliating. It was debilitating. And let me say this, it was permanent. You see, we, one of the things that we learned through Scripture is that it had been with him for about 14 years. For about 14 years, Paul had this thorn in the flesh, and it was driving him crazy. Maybe you feel like that today. Maybe you feel like you have some kind of thorn, some kind of weakness that just seems to pull your strength and your energy. Well, look what Paul does. Now, he does what we probably all would do, right? He he does exactly what we would probably all do. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away, right? Right? Good move, Paul. God, please take away this thorn. Please take away this weakness. God, I don't want this weakness anymore. Let somebody else have it. Three different times I pleaded for the Lord to take it away. Each time, don't miss this, these are some of the greatest words ever written by any person in all of human history. You say, how do you know that? Well, it's just my opinion, but these are really great words. As a matter of fact, if you write down on your... Uh, on your uh, Mirror a verse. If you try to memorize scripture, here's one you want to memorize. Look what Paul says. I prayed three times, God, take away this thorn. God, take away this weakness. Look what he says. And God said to me, my grace is all you need. My grace is all you need. You see, I told you a minute ago that happiness comes from a who, not a what. You see, that's where Paul came to. He realized that God's grace was all that he needed. Look what he says next. My power works best in weakness. You see, that's God speaking there. And he says to you and I that his grace is all that you need for today. That his power works best in your weakness. Maybe you're praying for something to be taken away. Maybe you're praying for something to get better in life, a weakness. We've all done that. But did you know that God's power can reach its full potential when we're the weakest? God's strength works best when we're at our weakest. And maybe you're weak in an area right now and you're wondering, God, what are you up to? What are you doing? Maybe that's where he wants to bring his power and strength into your life. Keep your eyes open because that's where the miracles begin. That's where the miracles can start. In the areas where we feel the weakest. Tim Keller wrote this. I want to read this quote to you. It's so helpful to me, maybe to you as well. He said, so many systems of thought appeal to strong, successful people. Because they pray... pray, Directly into their belief that if you're strong and hardworking enough, you will prevail. He, he said most thought systems out there are all about the strong people. But Christianity is not just for the strong. It's for everyone. Especially for those who admit where it really counts that they're weak. It is for people who have the particular kind of strength to admit that their flaws are not superficial, that their heart is disturbed. What he says is, Christianity is for people who say, you know what, I feel weak. I'm not exactly right. That's what Christian, that's the attitude of a Christian. And that they are incapable, here's the other part, and that we are incapable of rectifying it. You see, Christians admit that I feel weak and I can't fix it. I'm not 100%, but I can't get there to 100%. Only God can help me get there. Here's what he finishes with. Christianity is for those who see the need for a Savior, a need for Jesus Christ. Number one, our greatest weakness can become from our greatest strength. Number two, our greatest loss can become our greatest gain. And then number three, our greatest suffering can become our greatest blessing. I want you to see how Paul finishes this because, again, some of the greatest words, in my opinion, ever written are right here. Especially for those of us that feel weak. Especially for those of us that have gone through something tragic or tough. 
or heartbreaking. Look what Paul says here in these last few verses that we're going to read today. Verses 9 and 10. So now, I'm bad, glad to boast about my weaknesses. You remember our word happiness? Isn't it interesting that, that he uses the word glad? He says, you know, in the middle of my weaknesses, I can find gladness, happiness. Look what he says next. So that the power of Christ can work through me. He says, you know what? When I feel weak, I realize that that is when Christ does his greatest work. When I'm not 100%, when I don't feel like life is going perfectly in my direction, I can be glad because that's when Christ can work through me. You see, and you know this, but where it's tough for God to do work is when you and I are trying to power up. When you and I try to take the will, when we try to take control, we're pulling it from the Savior. We're pulling it from the one who should have the will. Look what he says next. And don't miss this. Again, nobody in the natural would ever write these words. He said, that's why I take, look at this word, pleasure. Pleasure? Are you sure you don't want to pick another word there, Paul? Are you sure you want to, don't want to mark glad and pleasure out? Those have nothing to do with weakness. Look what he says, though. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses. He actually finds happiness and gladness and joy in his weaknesses. And you say, how would he ever do that? Let's keep going. I take pleasure in my weaknesses and insults and hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer. Maybe one of these is you today. Maybe for you it's insult as somebody at work. Uh, Maybe for you it's a hardship. Just something is weighing you down. Maybe it's a persecution. You feel like your faith is being persecuted in some way. I don't know. Maybe it's a trouble for you. Maybe it's suffering for you. But Paul's speaking to anybody in that category. Anybody in that realm, look what he says next. Don't miss this. He says, when you go through all of those things, for when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. Now, I'm not an English major and I'm not an English expert, but that makes no sense at the end, right? In the natural, that would not suffice as a, as a proper sentence, correct? For when I am weak, then I'm strong. Nobody would say that. But Paul could say that. You see, Paul could look at his own life and he could say, you know what? When I feel my weakest, that's where God brings in my strongest. You see, I can't power through what I'm going through, but God can power me through what I'm going through. I can't power myself through what I'm going through, but God can power me through whatever I go through. So our greatest weakness can become from our greatest strength. Our greatest loss can become our greatest gain. And our greatest suffering can become our greatest blessing. I told you about the lawnmower that uh, I was given, and I, I was really appreciative of that lawnmower. Um, because I just didn't have anything as nice as that one was. And I told you I was frustrated. I just kind of, I wanted to get this thing running, you know. My other option was to go out and spend a lot of money on another lawnmower, right? Well, my mother and father-in-law, they're just very generous, and they do for us in many different ways. And so there were a couple reasons that I wanted to get this lawnmower running, and so this thing just wouldn't run. I could get it cranked for a moment, but if it ever went off, it's done. It was, it was, that was it. And let me tell you this, I would have to, wherever it would cut off, I would have to find another vehicle to come near it and jump it off. And it was just so frustrating. I just found myself, when I would cut grass, just so frustrated. And maybe you can relate to somewhere in your life where you just feel frustrated. And so I remembered back to something somebody told me a few years before. And here's what they said. Uh, You can buy this product at the store called a trickle charger. Anybody know what a trickle charger is? Trickle chargers are great. Now, I'm not doing an advertisement for this. I don't don't get any kickbacks or nothing. 
But I do want to tell you what a trickle charger does. A trickle charger is great for batteries or systems that just won't charge well. And what you do, you plug in this end. And then this looks like jumper cables here on the other end, right? So I said, you know what? I'm going to go buy a trickle charger. Let's see what happens. And I went and bought a trickle charger. I put it on that lawnmower and guess what? It's cranked every time since. <laughs> every single time. And you see, I think our lives are a lot like that lawnmower. I think there are days that you wake up and you don't want to crank. You don't want to get going. Or maybe you don't feel like you can get going. You're probably facing some things in your own life that you'd just rather act like they're not there. There's some kind of weakness. There's some kind of insufficiency, and you just wish you could make it go away. Well, that's what Paul tried. He said, I prayed three times, God, take this. God said, no. Now I got a plan. Paul, if you'll follow the plan with me here, if you'll go with me here, you'll see what I'm up to. I don't have to tell you what happened with Paul's life. But did you know, and I bet we have some people in here. Anybody in here named Paul? Any Paul in here? No Pauls in here? Okay. A lot of Pauls in the world. You know who they're named after? This guy right here. A lot of churches in the world. Saint Paul. It's cathedral. You see, Paul went on to be something special. Did you know that you can go on to be something special? You are something special. You see, even in the middle of our weaknesses, even in the middle of our thorns in the flesh, when we just don't feel sufficient, that is where God can do his greatest work. What if we were to do something, and I, I'll, I'll close with this. What if we were to hashtag, I am weak? What if you hash, hashtag that today? What if you were to hashtag, don't feel strong today? What if you were to post today on Facebook, man, I feel weak? Man, I don't feel like I can get out of bed and do what I need to do today. What if we, like Paul, embraced our weaknesses? And I don't mean wallow in our weaknesses. That's not at all what I mean. Because that's probably not healthy either. But what if we just admitted to the world, you know what, I feel weak today. Wouldn't that be amazing to scroll through Instagram or scroll through Facebook and you go, wow, she feels weak today. <laughs> She feels like her marriage isn't all that it's supposed to be today and she wants to work on it. What if he put, you know what, I've got this addiction. I need to really work on it. It makes me feel weak. What if we're all honest like Paul and when everybody else is saying how strong they are, we're like Paul and say, you know what, not, not me, I feel weak. But what if we finished it with something like this? I am weak, but me and he are strong. I feel weak today, but me and he are strong. What if that was what we scrolled through on social media today? Because you see, if Paul were to post on Instagram today, my guess is he would tell you his weakness. And he'd tell you to pray for him. You see, some of us feel weak today. and We just don't have the strength that we need. But you know that when we are weakened by life, God can strengthen us when we're strengthened by God guess what comes happiness can come into our lives that's why Jesus can write happy are those who are spiritually poor and happy are those who mourn I want to finish by telling you what a guy named Oren Hensley wrote he wrote a book called this is your brain on joy and here's what he wrote that anxiety and joy travel the same pathway in your brain. 
You see, our brains have almost like highways running through our neuro pathways. Here's what he said. Anxiety and joy travel the same pathway in our brain. It's normal for you to try, for both of them to try to occupy the same space in your brain. To get, try to get the right away, meaning anxiety and joy are constantly trying to take over your brain. When joy is on the road, anxiety has to get off the road. What if we chose happiness? What if we chose joy? And like Paul, we said, you know what? I can be happy. I can be glad. I can find pleasure in my weakness. Because when you are weakened by life, you can be strengthened by God. When you are weakened by life, You can be strengthened by God. Let's bow our heads together. I know when we talk about things like this, it pulls to the surface some emotion. And for just a moment today, I want us to deal with that emotion, those thoughts. Maybe you feel weak today. Could you take the attitude of Paul, whatever it is? You see, a man who probably could boast about his strength, he instead boasted about his weakness. He said, you know what? I know when I'm weak that God can fill me up with his strength. And and again, just how in the world can you be happy? Jesus, how can you write happier those who are spiritually poor, happier those who mourn? You see, that's the power of our God. That's the power of the one who created you. He can overcome your weakness. Wherever you feel insufficient. He's bigger, stronger, better than any of your weakness. Maybe today you you come and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Would you do that? Maybe that's your weakness. You're just spiritually not where you need to be. Maybe you're online today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Would you do that right now, right here? Just in your own heart and mind, just say something like this. Father, I'm a sinner, but I'm putting my faith and trust in you. Will you save me a place in heaven when I die? You see, that's a posture of weakness that becomes a huge posture of strength. For the rest of us today, would you hand over your weakness to God and say, you know what, I feel weak. God, would you make me strong? I've been weakened by life. But God, I know you can give me strength. Father, we thank you that you are strong when we're weak. That when we're not at our best, you always are. When we can't power up, God, you've already powered up. God, when life seems to get out of our control, you're totally in control. Lord, we thank you for that. But Lord, let us have the attitude of Paul that when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And Lord, when life seems to make us weak, we know that you're still strong. God, I thank you for what you're going to do in our lives today, our hearts. Just help us. God, we're going to give you praise. We're going to give you glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jody.